Harry, nice to talk. How are you today, pal? Yeah, thank you for that. We just have to tie up one loose end. What do you mean at your kids' birthday parties? I've seen Mr. Met at your birthday party. <laughs> Not He's quite. He yet. was that Timmy's on. once, though. He was that. T- uh, this is uh, this is a home run. I mean, uh, you know the New York Met fan uh, thought better than anybody. They're dancing in Corona right now with this move. Go ahead. Let me hear you. You know, you, uh, Chris, you just hit on maybe the most interesting component to the first half hour since this deal was completed. The sheer joy and excitement that I've seen from Mets fans just on Twitter is an indication to me that they feel as though they've been released from shackles that prevented them from enjoying players of this caliber coming to the Mets in the prime of their career, really for the better part of the last 12 years or so. So that in and of itself has the fan base excited, but the fact you're getting a kid who is in the prime of his career, he's gonna play all next season at the age of 27, he turns 28 next November, plus an accomplished pitcher in Carlos Carrasco, who guard willing is is, is healthy now. I don't like to say steal because the Mets did give up a couple of pretty good kids potentially in this deal, but this is one heck of a trade for the Mets. Oh, 100%. And I'll tell you, Howie, unless he falls off a cliff, I would be absolutely stunned if Lindor and Mr. Cohen don't get together on a long-term contract. I don't know when, but I would be really surprised that this is not a long-term marriage. You don't make this kind of move if you're Steve Cohen worth $14 billion, only to have him one year if he plays well. So you would agree with that too, correct? Yeah, and there are a couple of things in play there. If you're looking at it from Lindor's standpoint, there are a significant number of pretty good shortstops who are going to be on the market next offseason. And so that in and of itself might discourage him from even thinking about jumping into that potential mosh pit. And, you know, on the other hand, you look at what the Dodgers did with Mookie Betts, and it didn't take too long after they made the deal for him to sign him to that long-term contract. So I think all of that works in the Mets' favor. And you and I also remember a time when the Mets traded for players going into their last year, like George Foster and Gary Carter, and they were given windows. I guess this didn't happen here. They were given windows by the Reds and then the Expos to sign the extensions with those players before they even consummated the trade. That's not in play right now, but hopefully that'll happen before too long. All right, let's discuss the team. Uh, Lindor, McNeil at second base, J.D. Davis at third, no D.H. Let's think at the moment that won't be uh, happening in the NL, so we'll put Dominic Smith in (coughs) left field. You got Alonzo at first and leave Nemo in center, or do you think George Springer might be part of the offseason package as well? What do you see there? Look, only, you know what, right now only Steve Cohen knows the answer to whether or not George Springer is going to be in play as far as the money's concerned. And it's not as though there haven't been discussions and there hasn't been dialogue there. So each party seems to know pretty much where the other one's coming from right now. Um, But I remember saying, and maybe it was to you as well, at the very beginning of the offseason here, that one component of what the Mets were going to be in 2021 that had to be better than it was not only in 2020, but for several years before, was they had got to be better defensively up the middle. So they've clearly upgraded behind the plate with McCann. Um, They now have, as much as I like Andres Jimenez, and this kid has a chance to be a terrific player. He's got great instincts, but we know what Lindor is, and we know what he's going to provide now at shortstop. McNeil will be in his natural position, presumably, at second base. And if they could sign George Springer, too, Boy, just think of how much stronger they will be up the middle in 2021 than they have been in years. Carrasco helps the rotation. Let's get into him for a second because we've kind of forgotten and the Mets could use as many of these, you know, Strowmans, Carrascos, uh, you know, anybody, that, uh, the, uh, the young kid from last year, Peterson, they need as many of these possibilities to blend into the back of that rotation after DeGrom and Carrasco could very well fit very well in that support, in that department, Harry. Give me your thoughts there. Fire away. Hey, you know, he, he could be a very, very significant upgrade who gets lost in the shuffle here, given the profile and magnitude of Francisco Lindor. But, you know, the Mets certainly have a need in their rotation. And, and hopefully Carrasco is, is going to be 100%. And he's, he's cleared from the worst of what he went through a couple of years ago. But, you know, this is a guy who for a few years had been a premier pitcher who will certainly lengthen the Mets rotation and also buy some more time 
for Noah Syndergaard to come back from Tommy John. And so um, between the fact that they did re-up with uh, Marcus Stroman for the one year, now they've added Carrasco, they'll be getting Noah Syndergaard back sooner or later. And obviously with DeGrom at the top and Peterson encouraging last year, then, you know, even with this deal today, now the rotation looks a whole lot better than it did three hours ago. Uh, Landor, back to him for a second. Harry, last thing. Uh, you know, we all know coming to New York is, uh, it takes a while to get used to. We saw that with Piazza. We, you know, he didn't go out there. Mm -hmm. He wasn't unbelievable right off. I know he got a double in that first game against Milwaukee, but it wasn't yeah. like he was unbelievable early on. It took him a little while, too. You can't expect miracles out of Landora once we start a season. It's good. And no fans, which could help him, actually, sort of blend in a little easier, not as put much pressure on himself. What's your take on the acclimation scenario for Lindor when he becomes uh, a New York Met in the spring? Let me hear. Well, I'll draw the the comparison between Lindor and Mike Piazza, since you brought it up, you know, Mike as a personality was a little more laid back. Francisco Lindor, from what I've seen, and I haven't seen a ton of them, is a gregarious individual. And I think he brings the energy level of any team he'll play for up significantly. Um, Mike was more even keeled than that, but, you know, between Lindor's talent, personality, athleticism, and I, I just think that, you know, the Mets are getting a full package here and a guy who should not take too long to get acclimated to New York and the enormity of the market and the passion of the fan base. And I think based on his personality, I think he's going to feed off of that because he did not experience that in Cleveland. Excellent point. All right, go back to the tee box now and start duck hooking jives. Or no, I'm done for the touched. day. Very much. What the heck with it. <laughs> I'm done. We will see you. We will see you, Howie. Always a pleasure. We'll get you back in the spring. Appreciate it coming on here.